we're gonna go water the garden but before we do that we gotta take care of treat time would you like a begging strip boy oh there's my rooster yeah they got they like begging strips look how big them dudes are oh oh now we gotta go take care of a little below down there in my truck you want a begging strip with me oh finally get to come out of the house man was it hot today it was brutal got you a begging strip she did fine all right we'll come back in a minute all right we're making our way to the garden tell you what i'm gonna drag this hose to, to look at this thing that cheap piece of junk right there i got rid of because it leaks 40 bucks for that thing and then i put this back on it's leaking let me see if i can tighten this dude up a little yeah, it's just gonna leak man well that help all right let's drag this hose the other end so the sun's not in our face here yeah it's still leaking all right guys i haven't been able to work on the project so <laughs> i don't have much for content so i figured i'd bring you with me uh watering and yeah, we can talk about stuff who knows here we go start on the tomatoes now there's probably a hundred feet of hot water in this which i don't want to put on the uh, plants and that's better but anyway there's the ripe tomato yeah it's been brutally hot man like 103 today there ain't no coming out in that and i ain't working on nothing but the tomatoes are doing pretty good. I was worried I'd have to put up some sort of shade. Uh, not so much. I need to get out here and pick some of these weeds out. You know, it has to be birds because none of this soil that these tomatoes are in, they come out of the bags, you know. And, and how weeds get in there, it has to be the birds. I don't know. Well, the first thing you got to do before you water a big garden like this is you got to make sure you go pee. Yeah, because the minute you turn this hose on, guess what? That water, you're going to hear that water, and yeah, you're going to want to pee. So, and this thing's still leaking like a sieve. Nothing I can do about it. All right, see how nice this mulch makes it to water? It doesn't splash the uh, dirt back up onto the plant. That's really bad for tomato plants. And then it maintains the moisture a lot a lot better than if you just had it on dirt. So I gotta pick some of these dead leaves off. I can't do it. I got my iced tea in one hand and this in the other. And I don't generally uh, water till the sun's just about down. Came out a little earlier today so the camera could pick it up. These are Arkansas Travelers right here. They seem to be doing pretty good. I've got a couple that aren't doing as well as others, but they all got tomatoes on them. And what I'm gonna have to do in this kind of weather we're having is what I'm doing is giving them a pretty heavy watering at night. Because tomatoes ripen in the 70 degree temperature range. Any 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 70 degree, 70 to 80 is best for that. So I give them a light watering in the morning before the sun, you know, right when the sun comes up. And I'm gonna have some of these are straying outside of the cage. I'm gonna try to tip this back a little bit for you guys. nice thing about these 
lick tubs, you can see the water going down through there. See right in there, how it's getting darker. That's how you know you're getting moisture in there. And it really, I mean, this these things totally dry up every day. Marigolds are still thriving. All right, then what I do is I'll get down here on the tomatoes a bit, and I'll turn around. Boy, this one here. I think this is. I, I think I put. Yeah, I know I planted this from seed, but I can't remember what it is. But them tomatoes are huge on this thing. That one in the middle is big. I'm trying to mess around with this thing here, guys. Yeah, I am getting cabin fever bad. I am so sick of sitting inside. But there's nothing you can do in this heat. You know, I just can't, I can't work in it. And then I've got cucumbers there that are no good no more. Once they turn that yellow, they're no good. And, and cucumbers don't ripen after you pick them they're just the way they are uh, there's some i've got to pick that are perfect they're just probably not going to get that big and they're not doing very well right now but i got to pull those ones i'm not going to use even the chickens won't eat those and that's my fault for not not getting out here and getting them off now, a lot of these look like they're you know the leaves, the plants always turn their leaves downward to stay out of the heat. Doesn't mean they're they're struggling. Because I'll come out here in the morning, everything's looking great. And I just I haven't been real good about getting out here and weeding wheat taking the weeds out. And I need to. With them peppers over there, oh man, are they thriving. They are filling back up with peppers. I've got a whole bunch in the freezer already. And the way I do it is I slice them, you know, slice them in strips and then I lay them out on like a pizza tray and where they're not touching each other. And then I freeze them for about two hours. And then I'll take them out once they're frozen and put them in baggies. And then you can take them out as you need them out of the freezer. And you know, they'll thaw real quick and you know put them on pizzas or you know i use green peppers in a lot of things i cook so i know this video probably won't get a lot of views guys but i you know it's something to put out there we'll just have a little kind of like my coffees used to be just running my yap a little bit all right let's go over here these peppers i don't know what them flowers are but We'll leave them to the bees like that. Now this soil's been around for a few years and, and during the winter I'll bring, you know, charcoal, eggshells, I'll drop, you know, vegetable pieces, you know. So I, I get, I work this soil pretty good during the winter. Well, I think these are the most, I'm most proud of these this year. The tomatoes, man, they, they seem to do the best here around September. I'm sure that's pretty much everywhere. I've grown them in many states. But September is, you know, the most easy on them. I get a big harvest towards the end of August, September. And this year I planted three to three of these to a lake tub. I bet I could have got away with four. I may do four in each one next year because these guys are thriving. It ain't hurting it a bit to have that many in there. You know, these things don't get that huge, but these these are doing way better than any other year I've had. These gromas are looking rough. I gotta get in here and trim up some of the dead dead leaves and stuff off of them. But hey, they're, look how much, look how many tomatoes are on them dudes. 
Yeah, I'm not hurting. I already pulled a bunch of ripe ones off. And it was very, this is the hottest day of the year, so I'm giving them a good soaking tonight. Now, I want to rig up, I want to make this garden twice the size next year, but I'm not going to be out here for 30 minutes watering every day, so I am going to rig up a lot of water catchment uh, and some sort of irrigation. I, I probably, I, what I've got in mind is PVC pipe with holes over each pot uh, that drip. You know, just keep them moist. If I turn it on, I can I can regulate. I, I got to research it. I don't want to be out here uh, if this garden's twice as big. Because where we're at right now it takes a half hour, 20 minutes to water. Which I don't mind. It's, you know, kind of relaxing. But the bugs just eat you up. And I'm sprayed down good right now. Yeah, I got to... I gotta get some of these cucumbers off this thing. This thing's looking pathetic. They were so good. But hey, man, I ain't got anything off cucumbers since I've lived here. So this has been the best year for them. Because times are gonna get a lot harder, guys. And I got the room to make this thing 10 times better. I could even put stuff out in the dog's yard. They're not going to bother it. Look at all that room I got in there. They won't bother. Waldo might pee on something, but he ain't lifting his leg above them lick tubs. So the next time I'm in Oklahoma, I'm going to stop by every lick tub that guy has. And believe me, these things used to be $2 a piece. Now they're 10 And they're only going to go up. I was surprised he even had any. All right, let's go back out to the tomatoes. But it's, you know, if you live in a hot climate, you've got to use this mulch. Because that mulch keeps that moisture in there a lot longer than if it was just, you know, if it was just dirt. And mulch is cheap, you know, it's a little bit over two dollars a bag, but you can get probably four or five of these pots with one bag. So to make it easier and it looks good, you know. Looks a lot better than just dirt. Right there I got the potatoes I replanted in just dirt. I gotta throw some more but they're potatoes. I mean you can plant potatoes in a pile of boogers and they'll grow. But I will add some mulch once they sprout back. I put golden potatoes in this time. The last harvest was red potatoes. Man, I've been eating on them and they are good. I don't know if you can see on camera. See how dark it's getting down there? These white ones, real easy to tell. But I ain't picky. I'll take red ones, blue ones, whatever. And this guy, he's just struggling. That is a Arkansas Traveler. I had six of them, so that is an Arkansas Traveler. Yeah, maybe this video bores some of you guys, but you know, I'm gonna be harvesting a lot of stuff out of here. I already have, I already have. Yeah, you know, let's wet these taters down. See what happens when you don't have mulch? See that dirt swinging up there? That hits plants, it's not good for them. I just planted them probably four or five days ago when I harvested the uh, red potatoes. Look at the marigold. Let me get them up here. Look at this marigold plant. It has just taken over, which is a good thing. Tomatoes love them. I've got a lot of aromas in there. One's ripe, I see. Getting there. <laughs> Look at that dude there. It's, it's so full, it's going to the ground.
and these tomato cages are great you still got to tie them up a little bit when they you know if you don't catch them it's hard to uh, re-bend them things in back into the cage you'll snap the limbs off oh <coughs> excuse me oh all right yep them old weeds man even in containers you're gonna get them now go in there and turn that air conditioning down And it's going to be this hot, I think, till about this time next week. And then we're going to go into the low 90s, and that's going to feel great. <laughs> we need rain. It has not rained here in a long time. Oh, Lily. They got to watch their daddy. See what he's up to. Tom tomatillos, I have never grown them, and I've been watching a lot of videos on, well, what do you do with them? And apparently, you gotta plant more than one. They're not a self-pollinating plant, but I've, we've got a lot of bees and stuff around here. And I'm seeing tomatillos on there right now, and I'm just kinda learning what you do with them, because I've never grown them. Uh, I've learned how to tell if they're ripe, when they're, you know, I guess they take all summer to grow. And, uh, yeah, I got two different kinds of peppers in there. I guess you ain't supposed to do that. They'll cross-pollinate. That's all right. I like new things. That one's a... I'm not sure what that is. We'll look here in a minute. Sage is doing real well. I'm gonna tell you what, when I when I smoked that meat and I picked some of these herbs and put in there, oh man. I've never cooked nothing with flavor like that. I don't think I've ever cooked a tri-top before, but it was oh I will be making more of those. That is so good. I've had to go back to some of my gardening videos to see what I had because the labels are either gone or I didn't have I didn't mark nothing. And apparently I knew back then. This is my favorite time of the evening when that sun hits goes behind the mountain. It just cools down tremendously. Yeah, that, that tomato plant. And I know that, you know, you're supposed to pinch off a lot of these things if you want a bigger harvest. But look, guys, I got 18 tomato plants. I don't want to make a bigger harvest. I'm going to have more than I can, more than I can use in a long time. So, if I had a family to feed or something, that'd be different. I'd probably want the biggest harvest I could get. I'm just not interested in that, and I did pinch a lot of these off. You know, look at this guy here. He isn't him doing anything, but look how green he is. So that tells me, you know, there, there's tomatoes that are late bloomers, and that's one of them there. The nice thing is here, hardly any pests bother my tomatoes. And I imagine a lot, of, a lot of that's, but even when I did not plant marigolds with them, Never had too many problems with bugs, uh, squash, and cucumbers, whole different story. Squash beetles come out, and it's over. And I know there's ways to get rid of them. I've been lazy, man. Lazy. I haven't done those things. Did have a pretty good spaghetti squash harvest last year. All right, now we're over here to a hoblo pon poncho pepper. And that is a cayenne. Man, that's a good looking cayenne. I'm gonna let these dudes turn red. I've already harvested a bunch of them. And we got serranos right over there, the next one up. Look at all the blossoms on this tomatillo, man. That thing. It's just going nuts. And there's tomatillos. There's one up there. 
And I guess I didn't know anything about them. I've never grown them. They grow in a, like a, a shell, like a little sack. And then once that sack splits, uh, then they're in their firm, then they're ready for harvest. This is Serrano's. That is horseweed. Got little thorns on it. You gotta put a leather glove on to pull that junk out. This is soil that I got from the ranch I worked at, and we had those things everywhere. I have never had those on this property till I got manure from the ranch. And now they're isolated to the pots and up where I used to have the spearmint and things like that but I don't want that stuff spreading because it is a problem All right. and this basil flowering like crazy you cut them flowers off I think that's a variety I've never grown I don't know if there's a tag in there or I planted that from seed Next year, I'm going to be a lot better uh, prepared, make sure I mark things clearly. I did not do that this year. We do them all, though. Finally coming out after being in the air conditioning all day. I'm going to tell you what, them dogs are loving that room. Man, they love it. Basil, okra, look at them leaves drooping. But it's perfectly healthy. It's just trying to get out of that sun, man. And them okras are ready to harvest. That's why I usually uh, plant more than one because, you know, you got two or three, you can have okra every day. But I've got a whole freezer full of that stuff from last year. And I just, well, I don't know, I had a, I guess I had a cup available and I went ahead and planted some okra. And look at that squash and that, uh, I just let that, you know, I planted that because it was like the last thing left to find a place for. I'm surprised it even produced anything, but I have got a squash and I have got cucumbers out of it. In the morning, that will all be brought back to life and looking good. I'm not real worried about it. I didn't even think it would grow there. Can't be no more than three, four inches of soil. But I have ate something. That squash I put in uh, the last video came out of there. The only squash I planted. Look at this pineapple sage. <laughs> Give it a little water, come back in an hour, that stuff will be popping. I love that stuff. I'm going to plant more of that next year. I hear a few people uh, comment what a mess it is here, yeah? I'm building a big addition. That's the mess. That's why. Give me time, folks. I'm not going to come out here and clean this up when it's 103 degrees out. And a lot of that lumber still laying out there that I need, I don't care. You know, when, when the project's done, everything will be cleaned up. And it'll look even better because I'm going to landscape back here. I'm going to put up a fence. There's also going to be a little courtyard or garden out here. You'll see. I need to get this pine tree taken down and that one too. I'll do that myself. Those things are humongous, but I don't want to build all that there just to have a storm come and knock that pine tree over it. All right, back to the miter. Yeah, I think the camera got too hot or something. Sorry about that. Try it again. These GoPros are great, but 
they're not very reliable. Wow, look at these, look at these marigolds, man. Those are some I planted from seed. But they're a different color than the other ones. I think it was some kind of variety. Uh... All right, guys, GoPro keeps going off. Say it's too hot. So if that tells you anything. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to my channel, I'd appreciate it if you would subscribe. Give me a like, give me an unlike. This has just been an old garden episode, so, uh, you know, I try to do all kinds of different content. So, I appreciate you joining me. Happy trails. Well, the camera got too hot. Waldo, what do you think of that? You like milk bones, don't you? He only talks when he wants to. And come in here and turn your light on because Lily's scared of the dark. Yeah, and you don't need it at night because you guys are sleeping outside. <laughs>